The mysteries of Islam fascinate us time and time again. This is no different from the life story of the Prophet. Who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? An illiterate desert merchant who one day stumbled upon amazing Arabic rhetoric? Or was he the creation of Allah's greatest light, sent down to earth to pull man out of ignorance and bring them to the purest of truths? I, Ali Burji, am on a journey to discover the real story behind the Prophet, the real story behind our religion, the root, the beginning, the cradle of civilization. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين أبي القاسم محمد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين الغر الميامين المظلومين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين أستاذي العزيز دكتور إن شاء الله we will continue um, from our last discussion and uh, we're still in um, the marriage of Amir al-Mu'mineen and Sayyidah Fatima alayhi salam and uh, we, we stopped at, at the mahar uh, what we said was the basically uh, something like a dowry but the it's other way around yeah it's not well yeah? Yeah, we keep it as a mahar it's not a like mahar yeah. okay so basically what is the um, the seal or the agreement uh, of the whatever the husband is going to offer to um, the bride with her acceptance of course so inshallah we wanted to go into a very beautiful um, narration inshallah. regarding the mahar of uh, Fatima al-Zahra sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين. As we mentioned in the previous episode um, that Imam Ali alayhi salam went to sell his uh, armor and he sold it to someone and it turned out to be Jibra'il and he brought the money and gave it to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and the Prophet gave him the armor which uh, he said to him, he informed him that it was Jibra'il who bought the armor from him. When the Prophet uh, instructed Imam Ali to go and sell the armor so that he can bring um, and uh, the Prophet informed uh, Fatima Zara that um, uh, uh, Imam Ali has gone to do this. Uh, the Prophet uh, Fatima Zara said, Oh Rasulullah, uh, I accept Ali for uh, marriage to be my husband, but um, um, I don't accept the the mahr of uh, 500 dirham and um, she said uh, other people would agree money of silver uh, this kind of mahr <coughs> other girls if you like um, so what's the difference between them and your daughter who is the daughter of uh, Sayyid al And the Prophet said that Allah has said that the homes of earth um, forever, the homes of earth is your mahr. Allah Akbar. Um, and Fatima Zara salam, which is, if you like, from the material, uh, material point of view, it's a huge sum. But Fatima Zara salam said that I still am not content with this. Um, and then uh, on hearing that, uh, Jibra'il salam descended on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and he said, O Rasulullah, um, Allah says that um, paradise, al-jannah, and whatever in it is the mahr for Fatima Zara Subhanallah. And in here at this stage, Fatima Zahra said, I'm not content with that either. Mm. So, not only the earth, but she wasn't even content with the heavens, uh, the paradise, the Jannah, mm. and whatever is in the Jannah, which is uh, beyond our imagination. Yes. And then uh, Fat uh, the Prophet said, Oh Fatima, 
what do you want? Um, she said, deep down really what I want is uh, Allah, ask Allah to give, to set the mahr for me, is that uh, the shafa'ah. Allah gives me the shafa'ah so that I make this, the intercession for the sinners of the Shia of you. The Shia of the Prophet, she wants, she wants the authority to intercede and seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sinners of the Shia of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is, uh, that is uh, humongous. You, you can't even comprehend it. The amount of um, mercy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows on his creation. But you see also the understanding and compassion and wisdom of Fatima al-Zahra that she rejects all the riches of this world and the paradise. And all she, what she asks for is to be able to intercede on our behalf on the Day of Judgment for us the sinners. SubhanAllah. And that shows the, the amount of love they have. And honestly, it's justified when you say that Ahl Bayt are the manifestation of Allah's attributes. They are the, the, they are the manifestation of Allah's mercy, Allah's love, compassion. SubhanAllah. And look at from this beautiful hadith. How it, it, Fatima is telling us, listen, inshallah, I'll take care of you. Inshallah. Even all of you, lovers of Abu Abdullah, lovers of uh, Amir al Mu'mineen and of the Holy Prophet, we understand that you know there'll be difficulties, we'll sin, but at the end of the day, Fatima to Zahra will take care of will Shalom look Allah. after us. Now, obviously, we're not saying this to encourage our brothers and sisters to just carry on living life uh, without being uh, considerate to uh, the religious obligation. But this comes to show the amount of love and mercy Ahlul Bayt have. And also a very beautiful statement that if it wasn't for the love of Ahlul Bayt, we wouldn't really have much of a chance of seeing Jannah or even smelling a, a flower from Jannah. Mm. Subhanallah. And it's truly a beauty of and how blessed we are. The more we learn, the more we understand how blessed we are to call ourselves Shia of Ali. Mm. And inshallah, not just keep you on the name. We want to be by action Shia of Ali, mm. inshallah. inshallah. On, on this issue of Shia of Ali and us, the Shia and so on, and that you said you were not encouraging um, uh, people to be dismissive of their obligation. Um, we have uh, hadith which in, in which case someone asked uh, Fatima Zara alayhi salam, am I one of your Shia? So it's very important to see what what what's the definition, the of, definition the of the Shia. Uh, and she said, if you comply, if you do um, uh, what we instruct you, and refrain from whatever we prohibit you from, then you are our Shia. Otherwise, not. That's quite. Um, see, the thing, the last thing a Shia or a lover of, of Ali would want is on the day of judgment to not be recognized as a Shia. Mm. That would have been. Mm. Uh, yes. So, in order to be recognized as Shia, in order to be classified as Shia, is we must uh, basically do uh, whatever they have instructed us to do, and refrain from whatever they have instructed us to refrain from. Basically, to comply with their teachings. Um, this will make you, will makes us um, Shia, Shia of Ali, Shia of Fatima Zahra, Shia of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa um, so, it's, it is said that uh, Jibreel alayhi salam went back to, to the heavens <coughs> and this time came back with a document uh, in which it, is, was, it was written that Allah has set the mahr of Fatima al-Zahra to be the shafa'a of the sinners of the Shia of her father. And um, it was that which uh, Fatima Zahra was uh, content with, uh, that she get uh, this promise that she will have the authority to intercede, and she will have uh, to ask Allah for forgiveness for the uh, sinners of the Shia of her father. Also, if you think about it, Doctor, it shows as well the status of Fatima Zahra alayha, that uh, she, 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 anything she'd ask, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have accepted. 
Yeah. That's what I understand from mm. this narration. Mm. That Allah already has offered her everything. He, he offered her paradise. Yeah, <laughs> everything and w whatever's included in it. And she, she obviously chose Shafa'ah. Subhanallah. And uh, it's, it's, it's very good for us to, to acquire this knowledge, to understand the position of Ahlul Bayt and how uh, blessed we are to acknowledge them and follow them, inshallah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with the shafa'a of uh, Fatima al-Zahra sallallahu sure. alayha. So inshallah now we want to, um, getting a bit excited now. So we got the approval. Uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen inshallah should be getting ready for uh, the marriage ceremony. Yes. Yeah. So um, when um, uh, Imam Ali came and so brought um, the money, um, the 500 dirhams mm. and what happened and the Prophet Sallallahu so Alaihi Wasallam So he gave it to the Holy Prophet? Yes, the Prophet okay. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam um, said to him go to the mosque said to him about the, the armor and so on and then he said go to the mosque and I'll come so that we will announce we'll make this announcement um, and the Prophet uh, Imam Ali left the house mm. and headed for the mosque and on the way to the mosque, Abu Bakr and Umar saw him. He said, what's up? What's the latest? What's happening? Where are you going? Where are you coming from? He said that uh, Imam Ali السلام, said to them that uh, I have just come from the house of the Prophet Sallallahu He has agreed to marry his daughter Fatima to me. Um, and he has said, just as he's before, that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala has uh, uh, executed this marriage in the heavens. Um, and uh, he's asked me to go to the, to the mosque so that the people gather uh, and he will make the public announcement about this. Obviously, they were not very pleased um, uh, at, the, at this news because they had been rejected on numerous occasions uh, by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And um, so the Amir Mu'mineen Alayhi Salaam went to the mosque and then uh, they were group of people there, of, of the um, companions and so on. And then the Prophet Sallallahu came to the mosque and he asked uh, Bilal, Miqdad, Salman and Abu Dhar. These are one of the, some of the devout, companions. Yeah, devout and loyal companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He asked these four to go to the four corners of the city and um, invite people to come and gather in the mosque to hear the public announcement that the Prophet ﷺ wants to make. And <coughs> when all the people gathered, um, the Prophet ﷺ uh, delivered the sermon. It's a relatively long sermon. I'm not going to read all of it. Uh, and it's given in here. <coughs> it's almost two pages <coughs> of small um, font size. Um, the Prophet in here in the sermon said that I am not, I, I am like you when I want to marry or give my stepdaughters in marriage, I can do so. But when it comes to Fatima al Zahra, uh, her, her business is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as far as marriage is concerned. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered me to marry my daughter Fatima to my brother and cousin. Uh, and the first man to become Muslim and answer Islam, uh, who is Ali ibn Abi Talib. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has um, executed the marriage in the heavens and he has instructed me in your presence to make this announcement and I take you as a witness that we'll do this marriage uh, and um, the mahr of Fatima Zahra will be 500 dirhams. And uh, I announced this marriage if Ali agrees to it, and Ali alayhi salam immediately says, I agreed. Um, and then uh, when uh, the Prophet finished his sermon, Jibrail descended on the Prophet and he said, Allah instructs you to tell Ali to deliver a sermon uh, for marriage. Also, the, the nikah would have been recited. Yes. During the yes. Okay. And then uh, uh, the Prophet said, oh, Ali, go over the pulpit and sort of deliver a marriage. He said, deliver a, a sermon. And he said, 
I should do that in your presence? He said, yes, this is Jibra'il instructing me that this instruction comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and of course, Imam Ali alayhi salam uh, uh, delivered the, the sermon. Again, it's about nearly two pages. And he says, I have uh, sought the hand of Fatima Zara from the Prophet in marriage uh, for a mahr of 500 dirham. And I'm doing this in your presence. And uh, the Prophet has agreed. And, um, and, and then he said, I ask uh, in the presence of these people, I ask the Prophet again uh, that he, in your presence he agrees to this marriage. And, um, and the Prophet agreed to that as well. And um, the Prophet again said that, that I um, accept you as a husband for my daughter. And Allah has married you to Fatima Zahra in the heavens. Not only has married you, but paid for the mahar as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? That's right, yes, very true. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So now, uh, I'd imagine that Amir al muminin needs to make preparations for the, his new household. Yeah? Mm. Um, obviously, w we understand how difficult it must have been for them migrating from Mecca, coming into Medina with nothing. Anyway, they didn't have much uh, in yeah. Mecca anyway. Mm. So, I wouldn't be expecting materialistically for a lot of things um, to be summoned mm -hmm. for the household. Mm -hmm. um, now, with regards to the house, did um, Amir al-Mu'mineen build the house? Was, was the house given to them? How did it start? Yeah. How did the, the, the household come to be? Yeah, the house um, was uh, given by one of the um, Ansar. I think it's come later on, it's called Haritha. Uh, I, I'm trying to remember the name of his father, um, but it was given by one of the Ansar. Uh, may Allah uh, bless him. May Allah bless him. And he said, um, um, I, um, obviously Imam Ali alayhi salam was not uh, a wealthy man, if you like, from the material point of view. Yes. Um, so um, um, uh, that was one. And of course, they wanted to go and sort of buy the necessary items for the you know, household items and whatever, uh, which of course uh, the Prophet gave from that 500 dirham some money to Bilal, some money to Miqdad, some money to Amir al Mu'mineen to go and buy some of the items which are necessary. And in fact, in this work, um, um, there are, they've listed 26 items that were bought, um, you know household items, if you like, uh, for, uh, for use, for the benefit of uh, the new couple, Imam Ali and Fatima Zahra alayhi salam. And of course, I can list them, I, I've listed them as, as they have listed here, and I, um, I can go through them to tell you the sort of thing that they have bought. Inshallah, bismillah. Um, some of the, uh, the things that they have uh, bought, for example, uh, in the list that are given, water sack, a mm -hmm. blanket, a clay pot for cooking, um, two silver bangles, a mat. Uh, what's a silver bangle? Sorry, um, two silver bangles. Yeah, they some bangles that they wear on their on their hands. Oh, um, like a bracelet. A bracelet. Okay. Okay. Uh, bracelet uses a kind of a chain, but this is um, a copper jar for hair dyeing, milk bowl, a water can. A cloak or chador, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, the chador that are worn by sort of Iranian or the abaya that were worn in Iraq, for example, in other countries. By uh, the sisters. By the by the women, yeah. Uh, two clay jugs, um, um, uh, a clay water cooler. Mm, I don't know if you remember, but in the old times there were some sort of large um, uh, clays to store water mm -hmm. and in the summer it kind of keeps it cool mm. and um, and the water uh, the, uh, there are any decimants or there are particles they will settle down and uh, to the bottom of the and uh, you could uh, pick up cooler. the water from the top that's so right you pick clean. up the water and yeah. clean and do it so presumably that's the sort of thing that they'd bought mm. um, as I said if you um, uh, you're talking about 40, 50 years ago, up to then, there was this kind of clay 
water coolers in um, various you parts in them Iraq. Today, in villages, for example. Yeah, probably yes, in villages yeah. which we have seen. They they were there, and presumably it's one of those that they are referring to in here. Yeah. Also, there is another green colored water. Uh, 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 clay or or jug, uh, a, a cotton ma mat, uh, sheepskin rug, um, head scarf, a shirt, four pillows. Uh, two were filled with date uh, palm leaves, and uh, two were filled with animal skin pieces, uh, a sieve, a handkerchief, um, stone handmill. Stone handmill to, to um, ground the flour. The, they or ground the, the, or the wheat, the wheat or uh, barley. Probably they, they probably barely used uh, wheat. Mm. Uh, Must be scarce. They, yeah, uh, to f ground the barley mm -hmm. to turn them into powder, so that or flour, so mm. that they could use for making the bread. Um, <clears throat> four uh, leather cushions filled with uh, scented herbs, um, a towel. Drinking bowls, um, uh, two mattresses, one filled with uh, date leaves, yeah. date palm leaves, and another one filled with animal skin pieces, mm -hmm. um, two woolen garments, and uh, a bottle of perfume. So these are, if you like, 26 items that were bought um, for to start their life to start together, their lives. to their household. And if you sit and ponder and reflect upon it, subhanallah. Uh, the best of creation. Look how simple and humble and pious they are. That oh, they just basically require the essentials, and that's something beautiful for us to take as well. And you know, keep reminding our brothers and sisters because nowadays it's getting a bit ridiculous, doctor. To be honest with you, I I, I can understand the frustration of uh, the brothers we have in the community because so much is expected from them today. Mm. And the thing is, the mindset of us. We, we need to constantly look back to our, our masters and see that the materialistic things are not really... We just need the necessary ones. There's no need for extravagance. There's no need like uh, today, people will not be happy if you just have the essentials. You, you want to have the best car, the best sofa, the best TV. Of course, the family could build up to that later on. But starting your life with your, you know, your spouse, you, you know, create your household, you just need the essentials. And obviously, the rest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes care of. Inshallah. And it's beautiful. Subhanallah. Um, um, yes, yeah, so now we have Amirul Mu'mineen and Fatima al Zahra building their house. And uh, what, what, uh, what else um, occurred? So once they've got their things, they went in the house. Uh, anything else that may have occurred? Well, I don't know how much time we have. Um, we wanted to, um, um, basically between, after doing the nikah marriage or doing reciting uh, marriage mm. um, contract and uh, preparing the household items and the house and so on, uh, it, and, and actually when the wedding take place and the wedding ceremonies, mm. um, <coughs> um, uh, there was some, a lot were going on. I don't know how much time I have, whether I can sort of continue this. Uh, well, we could uh, briefly say something. Um, basically, those, there were those people who were uh, very unhappy about being rejected okay. uh, by the Prophet. Okay, there were those who were rejected and they just gave up and went, left. Yeah. Uh, but those who were closer, if you like, uh, to the Prophet and who were rejected by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were very unhappy and unfortunately they continued to um, uh, be mischievous um, in the sense that they tried to do something so that uh, this doesn't, they can put a stop to it if you like, it doesn't get to the wedding. And basically what they were saying is that they used to send their wives and they used to go on, the, 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 the women used to go and see Fatima Zahra uh, privately. And uh, they had one agenda, basically uh, saying that, you know, Ali is a poor man. He doesn't have much wealth, uh, much property. And you rejected, uh, and there were suitors who were very wealthy, 
who had a lot of many properties and state and so on. Uh, but you rejected him, you rejected them and married Ali ibn Abi Talib. So this was the theme and Fatima Zara used to get upset by that. Because there were people um, belittling Amir al Mu'mineen. They were belittling Amir al Mu'mineen, <coughs> and presumably the aim was hopefully. Uh, she changed her mind. Changed her mind. Little did they know. Little did they know. Uh, so basically, they said, Look at you. You've, you've married, you've agreed to marry the poorest in Quraysh, and you have very little mahr, which is 500 silver coins, which is nothing. And then all you have is uh, uh, one sheepskin rug, okay, and pillows filled with um, uh, date palm leaves, okay, and, uh, and the rug that you have underneath you is nothing. Uh, so this, they adopting this kind of attitude towards uh, Fatima Zara mm. alayhi salam, and um, she, that would cause distress, and she used to report it to her father. Sallallahu alayhi wa and um, uh, and her father, of course, used to respond um, in kind, and uh, in order, and she used to at least feel happier. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, even though he doesn't have um, a lot of worldly wealth, just as I don't, and a lot of prophets didn't. Uh, um, Prophet Isa alayhi salam. Uh, I'd say most of the prophets. Uh, yeah, yeah, Prophet Musa alayhi salam, they weren't well off. They didn't have, they were rarely pe people like Prophet Solomon, for example. Who were given a kingdom. Yeah, who were given a kingdom. But the majority of the prophets, the overwhelming prophets, were uh, leading a life um, like uh, that of the Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. sallallahu alayhi wa and Amir al Mumin alayhi salam. And <coughs> in, in order to give. Uh, uh, to tell about the virtues of Imam Ali alayhi salam and the merits of Imam Ali alayhi salam. He said, the day that I went to Mi'raj from, uh, from Bayt al-Maqdas, I saw it was written on the uh, rock that there is no Allah, no, no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger, whom Allah will help and support um, by his uh, wazir, by his vicegerent. And I asked Jibra'il, who is this wazir? This is at the time of Mi'raj. I asked, who is, Jibrail, who is this wazir? And Jibrail said, he is Ali ibn Abi Talib. And he said, when I reach Sidrat al-Muntaha, um, in the seventh heaven, uh, I saw it was written on one of the columns of the Arsh on the throne, that um, there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. And Allah will support his messenger with his wazir, with his vicegerent. And uh, the Prophet says that, to, continues in this hadith to say to Fatima Zara, um, on the day of resurrection, the first people who come out of their graves will be uh, I and Ali ibn Abi Talib, myself and Ali ibn Abi Talib. And Ali ibn, I and myself, myself and Ali ibn Abi Talib will be stand on the bridge of, which passes over the hellfire and for people to cross that, that surat, to the other side if you like to paradise. And Ali ibn Abi Talib will tell the fire, take this or leave this alone. Take this, uh, this individual who is not one of the followers of Imam Ali alayhi salam, says, so you take him and, or the opponent of Imam Ali. And if he's, he's devout of Imam alayhi salam, a loyal friend of Imam alayhi salam, he says, leave, that, leave him alone so that he passes this. So he, he wants to show the um, merits of Imam Ali alayhi salam to Fatima Zara salam Allah um, And of course the hadith, hadith continues. He says, this is, these are the qualities of Muhammad Ali salam, even though in the world Allah has decided that he shouldn't have a lot of wealth because this has been the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of the uh, prophets and the vicegerents of the prophets were materialistically, from yeah. the material point of view, they weren't, they weren't well off. Imagine if, if he had a bit of wealth, what would the enemies of Ali say up until today? Exactly, so, yeah. Alhamdulillah, Allah and, knows best. And uh, at the end of this hadith, which I... I Summarized, I didn't go through the whole thing. <coughs> and of course, the Prophet said that uh, from this marriage, you will have the two, uh, two sons which, who are the chief of the youth of paradise, Hassan and Hussein. And the Pro uh, Fatima Zahra, having listened to this hadith, she, was, she became very happy and said, 
I do not want anyone other than Ali ibn Abi Talib to be my husband. Ali is from you like uh, the station of um, Harun from Musa, or Ali is, is to you like Harun was to Musa. Um, so call him <clears throat> by the name of the son of Harun. And he said, what's the name of uh, son of Harun? He said, Shubba. He said, but my tongue, my language is Arabic. So Jibra'il uh, said to him, okay, man, call him Hassan. So <clears throat> I feel like this is the equivalent of Shubar in, in Hebrew.